next speaker tonight is Matt Jaksik. Matt is the um, Senior Director of Business Development at SecureKey. And Matt's topic tonight is Verified Me, an Ecosystem Approach to Digital Identity. So Matt, please go ahead. Uh, so most people have heard of SecureKey. Um, we're about 100 uh, people in, ter in terms of size been around for about 10 years, solely focused on digital identity. And the reason people usually know about us but can't place us is they recognize us from the CRA website where they typically log in to file taxes and things like that. Uh, about five years, six years ago now actually, we launched a product called Security Concierge that allows you to use your bank as a login service for the federal government. The big benefit uh, for anybody who's used social media uh, or social media logins is that you don't need a brand new username and password. It's not something that you forget all the time and have to reset. Uh, and the big benefit for the government is they don't have to have the cost of actually managing all those credentials. So every time that you want to reset a password, call their call center, etc., cetera, uh, they're incurring a cost on it. So we started with this concierge service, uh, working with a number of banks and uh, government entities. And the question we kept, or the, the feedback that we kept getting was, it's great that you can help a returning customer log back in, but who is that customer the first time that they show up? So how do we create a more frictionless digital identity experience the first time I interact with, a, with an individual? And you know, when we took a step back and looked at this, our view was we don't have very good identity tools today. If you look across uh, you know, any big organization that you, you work with, say for example your telco, if you want to interact with them in person, they usually ask you for two pieces of ID. If you're going to call them up, they're going to ask you for a passcode over the phone or a passphrase. And if you're online, you're using a username and password. So for one company alone, you're interacting with them in three different ways to prove who you are. So we wanted to create a, an identity tool that removed that and worked across all the channels. We also think it needs to work across all the industries in order to get the, the strong adoption that, uh, that we're going to need. So when we look at how identity is, is typically done today, uh, you have your driver's license is kind of the default document but it's really hard for anybody to actually validate that document itself and the information on it. You kind of check some of the holograms and look at it, um, but you know, if you go up to some of the streets and uh, some of the stores in Toronto, I'm sure you, for a couple hundred dollars you can find a driver's license that looks pretty darn good. Um, there's no actual way to validate what picture should be on that though. So if I can go and replicate the driver's license, change the picture, all of a sudden I have a brand new identity and most people won't know the difference. Uh, the other way that typically is used is um, knowledge-based questions. So a lot of times when you're applying for a financial services product, you're going to get questions about your credit history and things like that. Uh, the feedback we've heard is almost everybody fails those, especially the first couple times they try. So if you're trying to sell a new service online, seeing 60-70% failure rates for customers creates a bad experience and you have to basically direct them back into, uh, into a retail channel. So we teamed up with, uh, with seven banks uh, who invested uh, as well into SecureKey uh, to actually create a brand new digital identity ecosystem. Uh, and why did we partner with the banks? Uh, a couple of reasons. First, they protect your money. Uh, so if they can protect your money, they can probably help uh, identify you and protect your identity. Second is they actually have a really broad coverage in Canada. So the big five banks have, uh, cover roughly 80% of Canadians. Uh, and so we can actually get to a pretty large scale very quickly. And they already invest millions of dollars a year in cybersecurity and protecting your, your login credentials. So what are we, what are we launching? Uh, we're launching a brand new identity service called Verified Me. Trusted identity in your control. Uh, it's a identity service that's rooted in your bank, so you'll be asked to authenticate with them. And then we can actually have your bank assert information on your behalf. So rather than me typing in my own information and sending it uh, to uh, when I want to sign up for a service, I'll actually have my bank send that information on my behalf already. And that's just where we start. We then layer on additional claims, be it from a province, uh, your telco who knows what phone that you're coming from right now, uh, and, and other things like that. So what is the experience we think we can generate? So if I take the, uh, you know, buying a mobile device experience today, uh, only a couple, of, uh, a couple of our telcos actually sell devices online but most of them will make you uh, fill out a really long form and even then you may still be asked to uh, call the call center or to, to go in store. So what we think we can get it to is, is similar to the experience you have up on the screen here. 
If I see a deal that I like at Rogers, I can tap that and say I want to uh, sign up using Verify Me. I'll be asked to authenticate with my bank. Uh, Verify Me will then send over information from my bank as well as my credit bureau so that Rogers can, uh, can complete the application. And right then and there, they can actually make a decision that they want to sell me the phone and ship it over to me. So very different experience from, from where we are today. And as we started going down this, we actually talked to uh, a number of other industries. And one of the ones that kind of was surprising for me is, is the insurance space. So if you think about your insurance company, they actually already give you, they provide your services. They, they cover claims, you have benefits with them. But it's really challenging for them to get you to move online and, and to do that in a way that doesn't have a lot of friction. So we talked to Sun Life uh, last year and we built a demo with them that said, can we leverage the bank and tell oh, information to have a high enough assurance to onboard a customer to your services so that they can actually have a, fr a more frictionless experience. So that's what we, we demoed here. Uh, it's a, essentially a customer signing up for the first time to, uh, to Sun Life so that they can actually access and submit claims. And they're gonna say they want to uh, sign up using Verify Me or register using Verify Me. When they go and they tap that link, the Verify Me service will come up uh, and it'll actually, actually say, let's validate the phone that you're coming from right now. And so we'll check the SIM in the device and make sure it actually, or see what phone number is on that and make sure it matches the banks. And then when I hit submit there, I can actually provide information over to Sun Life and they can keep, uh, they can actually finish opening my account for me. So very different experience than trying to find your benefits card and the membership number uh, or calling the call center that, to have somebody uh, help you with that. And so what we want to do is be able to layer in a whole bunch of these data provider sources, uh, be it your bank, uh, your province, et cetera. But things that get more interesting, like the CRA, you can validate your, uh, your income for the last three years if you want to apply for a loan. Things like your employer, so that we actually know that you're still employed uh, and potentially who that employer actually is. And then packaging those up and layering those different claims at various services. So we can support everything from I want to buy a lotto ticket online and just prove that I'm of age. Two, I actually want to I, uh, find my medical records or see test results and have a much higher uh, level of assurance on that as well. So we can support kind of the wide range of use cases that we, we see out there today that are, aren't as frictionless as they could be. And since this is a tech conversation, of course we have to talk about blockchain. Uh, so we actually have built this entire uh, ecosystem on top of Hyperledger Fabric. So a blockchain technology. I always get the question as to why. Uh, and it's really so that we security can remove ourselves from the middle of every one of these transactions. By leveraging blockchain, we can actually have our partners operating core parts of the infrastructure, making sure things uh, happen the way they should. But we as secure key won't see any, see any of the data. We don't control any of the transactions. We don't create a honeypot of data or anything centralized like that. And we can actually have a, a really robust ecosystem without secure key running the service ourselves. Uh, we rely on partners for that. So that's Verify Me. Uh, we're launching later this, uh, later this year with uh, the seven banks that I mentioned and uh, excited for, to get that out there. Thanks very much. Yeah, so our approach is very much to find local partners uh, in each ecosystem. Uh, so organizations like banks are, are very good for us to work with. They have really high bars about how they identity proof people as well, et cetera. Um, so we don't want to go into another country where we then try to you know, relay all that groundwork. Uh, so we are looking at a number of countries uh, across the world where we can leverage uh, or license our platform out. Uh, to various organizations to help them build that ecosystem or to potentially partner with, with some of the banks and other uh, organizations there to do that. Um, but it's very much a geographic based uh, approach to do that. In your beta, are you in history of beta right now with this? Yeah. Uh, what are you seeing, like some of the things you didn't expect that you're seeing from the trials? Sure. So we're actually in a, I'll call it a pre production state with our bank partners. So they're integrating into the, the ecosystem now. Um, so we'll have live transactions on the system in the summer time frame uh, where we can actually get some of that feedback. We have done a lot of user testing though of uh, the concept, the you know, experience in the app uh, itself in terms of how, um, how it works users through, uh, 
through the, the various flows. And the reception has been generally quite good. Um, so social media logins and those experiences have you know, trained users or allowed users to see that I can leverage a service that I already have to sign up for something else and reduce my friction um, in doing that. And so that, that concept seems to resonate really well. We obviously have, a, or we do have a very different privacy model than, than some of the social media sites. So we're not tracking users, mining their data to, to market them, et cetera. Um, so we need, that's a, a very key message for us to, to talk about. But the, the initial feedback we have is all very, very positive on that. And how do you monetize? So the, the business model is that the, the company that's receiving the information about me uh, pays a fee back to the network, and that fee goes primarily back to the data providers. Uh, and so that's the, the business model there. So um, you were in the pre-production stage. How long did it take for you to come up to uh, this point? So this journey has been about, uh, about two years now, uh, from the initial concepts and trials and, and proof of concepts through to, to where we are. Um, a lot of that was obviously since we're building on top of blockchain, a very uh, fluid uh, technology in terms of how, how much it's been developed over the last couple of years. Um, so there's been a lot of work on, on that side of it. And I would say the other side that's been uh, a lot of effort is um, all of the, the non-technical parts. So uh, the legal frameworks that make it work, the business models, the infosec uh, inf information security requirements, uh, the privacy policies that we want to have in place uh, and making sure that all, not just ourselves as security, we understand that, but that all of our partners are bought into those, uh, to those areas as well. So that is at least as much effort as the actual core technology part of it. And then what's your roadmap for uh, expansion? So there's a couple of ways that we expand. Um, within Canada, we're looking to bring on new partners as, so that various different data sources like that employment information, et cetera. Uh, that's kind of the first area that we look to expand. We'll get into some other more interesting uh, user experiences and use cases over time as well. Things like, I just updated my address at my bank. Can you actually propagate that down to all these other companies that I have a relationship with? So those are other like, platform features that we'll bring on. And then the international expansion is probably the, the, the other piece that we're, we're going to invest a lot of time into. Yeah. What are the service providers you're partnering with? Who are the service providers you're uh, service providers in, in what regard? Like, you, 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 have, you work with the banks, yep. they, they, they can serve the identity of the users. Who's going to use the service? Who's going to use Verify Me? Sure. So, our initial data providers that we'll have are the banks who can provide things like your name, your date of birth, your address, and your contact details. Uh, your telecommunications company who can validate the phone that you're coming in on, uh, the location of the device that your account's not suspended or, or in a, a lost or stolen phase. Uh, and then we're working with a credit bureau as well to bring on information about your identity and your, your credit score. Um, some of the areas that on, are on the consuming side, we're talking to everybody from uh, the, obviously our initial banking partners to the insurance companies that, uh, that we mentioned uh, through to things like an apartment rental site. Uh, so how do I actually validate that the, uh, the landlord owns that property and is a known person? Uh, and then when there's somebody renting it, how do I validate them? Uh, so it really has been kind of across the board. Uh, the one that I'm most excited about is actually on the health space. So how can I actually go get test results and whatnot? Um, or how can I see a doctor remotely? It's not an easy thing to do today, and we think we have a lot of opportunities to bring uh, an identity tool that enables that. Is yeah. there anybody else that's doing this type of approach? There's a number of companies, uh, especially internationally, that are looking at identity-based blockchain networks. Um, some of them have very, very similar concepts to what we've been proposing and what we're working on. I don't think anybody quite has the same partner model that we do, uh, and that's really what we see as the, the core differentiator. So getting folks like banks bought into this model and to be uh, you know, champions of the network. Sure. Um, so you're using a private blockchain how do you guarantee that on the other side of what you're not seeing, on the other side where it's actually, they have authority, they have like the, the keys and everything? Because the private blockchain is almost like, yeah. Sure. Right, so how do you guarantee that IBM is keeping the data safe or that? So, yeah, so it's, it's actually our core partners that run those nodes within the network. 
So each one of the financial institutions I mentioned will run a node itself. Uh, and they obviously are quite good at retaining records and systems and whatnot. Um, they have, you know, they do that for their existing business today, right? Uh, they have, you know, very high security infrastructures where they do manage those, those keys, so, yeah. Any other questions? Sure. So, so there's some uh, Facebook login and Google login. Do you see those as of benefit to what you're doing or are they in a different domain? I think there's definitely some similarities in terms of what the user experience is. Uh, we have a big differentiator in, in terms of why businesses would prefer to use something like, uh, like our verified me model. The, the first one is that we know the information is coming from trusted financial organizations. So it's not me creating a profile, typing in a name and asking Google to share that on my behalf. It's actually my bank who's done the KYC validation, know your customer validation who has records about here's my driver's license or uh, other identifying document that's sharing that information. So as a consuming company, you know it's actually validated information. Uh, and the second piece is our privacy model is, again, very different. So we make sure that the user actually can't be tracked in the whole ecosystem. Uh, we as SecureKey don't see any of the data and don't see the user's uh, actions. And uh, our design is that the banks actually don't know the end company that they're sharing the information to. So again, they're not directly tracking their customers for, for that as well. So that's probably our biggest differentiator from a user ex uh, end user experience. Um, and we think it's pretty important as well. Okay, so what you're, what you're saying is like there's, there's no way to link whatever activity you're doing with a bank and associate with another supplier or another partner. Because like, I'm thinking it's like, it must be possible to leverage a profile, to build a profile so you can market to the people better. So if someone's yeah. bank uses this particular telco, uses this particular grocery store, there must be a way to build a profile. So we've been pretty careful about making sure the user privacy model is there where we can't actually do that exact piece. Uh, so because you add in something like your telco, your bank doesn't get all of that information just because it's now part of your profile. We actually make sure that the information, <coughs> sorry, the information stays at its respective source until the user is expressly consented to sharing that information to another party. So I can go add in the CRA as a, as a connection or, uh, or another telco um, or you know, another type of company. And unless I explicitly authorize that information to go over to my bank, they're not seeing a copy of that data. Are there some trails? Like there must be some links that says, okay, you went to this site. There must be some, not specific detail, but there must be some tr trails of your activity. So we can, it's probably a longer discussion. There, there are ways to potentially recreate parts of a transaction that do, uh, do look at that for, um, you know, if, if there is ever a legal reason that, that we need to. But no one party actually has enough information to recreate that transaction. You actually have to go to multiple organizations to actually do that recreation. So it's very difficult and very computationally expensive and not something that you can readily mine throughout the network. Uh, and again, that's a very big core part of our, of our approach. Sure. Last question. Um, how, how do you plan to compete against models that will come later when AI and like, actual bioverification is more mature? Uh, far more scalable because then they don't need to have local partners. This and, and then the sleep into every app and every every single thing. How do you compare sure. with that, such models? Uh, we'll see how some of the ecosystems evolve over time. I think the biggest piece with biometrics is they're really good at identifying a returning user or that you have the same person. But how do you figure out all the attributes about that person? How do you know that that fingerprint is actually associated with Matt and his date of birth is this and his address is here? Uh, and then how do you track some of that information as it changes over time, like my address? Um, so there still needs to be a connection, even from that biometric, back to some data about the user that somebody's holding. And so that's the piece that you, you still need other partners uh, in order to enable that. Sure. Are, are any gaming companies working with you right now? Uh, gaming in? Like uh, <coughs> mobile gaming um, studios. Uh, so we haven't actually bridged very far into the gaming side of things. We've been more focused on, uh, on some of the other industries that we talked about before, and uh, you know, financial services, healthcare, etc. But we're certainly open to, to you know, speaking to those guys as well. Awesome. Yeah. In the back there. The yeah, problems that BC has an advanced identity platform. Can you integrate with that? Can you have to leverage? So yeah, so we've actually got a long-standing relationship with uh, with the province of BC. 
we actually help do the authorize or authentication of the BC Services card when it's when it's tapped somewhere, um, and uh, and so we're in active discussions about trying to figure out how we can leverage and work with the provinces uh, alongside the Verified Me network. Um, so obviously those are really complex uh, conversations, but um, we think there's a lot of synergy to br and we think it's critical to bring in provincial IDs to this ecosystem as well. Sure. So with the insurance example, you're checking against a cell phone number, right? So with the banking, like, well, to get the bank information, like, do you, like, ask you to give you a location and password or something, or? Yeah, so, uh, the... And is that, like, a sample or what type of thing? It, the video didn't show it because the, um, the user had already done it, but <clears throat> and they recorded that. Uh, but every single time you want to perform a transaction, you're asked to authenticate with your bank. So in real time, using the bank's uh, actual authentication, we have a deep integration to actually uh, into that side of it. And, uh, and so we will ask you to actually, in real time, log into your mobile banking site uh, in order to approve a transaction. Um, and so yeah, so that, that would have been in there as well. And it's not us collecting the credential, it's actually us directing you to the bank site to have you enter uh, in that information directly. Great, thanks very much.